You're still watching Morning at 10 TV, uh, 5 minutes to 8 a.m. I'm Arnold Segawa. Let's uh, move on now. Uh, this year has been marred with uh, a lot of uh, controversy. One that uh, we are grappling with right now is one around a scientific election. Uh, Malawi didn't have one. A few other countries haven't had one. Well, with over... We're just over 800 cases that uh, we have confirmed for COVID-19 in the country. Well, we will be having a scientific election come next year. And uh, what this would possibly mean is uh, relying on social media, TVs, radio campaigns, and of course, the all-important media people like myself. Uh, to uh, help us unpack this particular conversation, to my left, we do have uh, Nicholas Kalunji, uh, who is... Uh, a media uh, person, or should I say a digital media space uh, enthusiast, uh, just to my left and uh, to my extreme left, a member of parliament for Ntungamo Municipality, uh, Gerald Karuhanga. Honorable Mr. Kalunji, yes, thanks sir. for making time to speak to us. Thank you. Uh, in today's Daily Monitor, striking news that uh, the government doesn't actually have money for television sets that uh, everyone was very excited about. <coughs> this is on uh, the fifth page. Uh, Honourable uh, 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 Karuhanga, just uh, walk us through this. How, do, uh, how, how does the parliament work? Do they just wake up and say we, we might need money for cups or pens like a certain <laughs> institution and then they turn out not to have the money? Uh, uh, what happened here? Well, I think that's uh, one of those uh, points that point to the epitome of uh, the disorder that we see in our governing system here. Um, ordinarily, if government wants anything done, and here I mean the executive, they bring a proposal to parliament, and then that proposal request is sent to the budget committee. Mm. The budget committee examines, scrutinizes, and makes a report back to parliament. Now, I've been looking around to see uh, where, where is this talk coming from? Money for TVs, for radios, that they're going to buy radios for everyone, TVs for... So, so where is this coming from? And um, so it, it, it's not surprising that finally they say there is no money, because we've not seen the, the actual seriousness uh, about it. And in any case, would Uganda actually afford to buy TVs and radios for everyone? Well, the, the 10 billion mysteriously appeared and uh, you guys got that. So <coughs> where did that come from? Well, uh, like I said again, the, 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 our country is uh, shrouded with lots of mystery. <laughs> it's governed with lots of mystery. Uh, on one hand, you will not find adequate money for, uh, uh, for even masks for medical workers. Uh, uh, and then on the other hand, you will find that yes, there is 10 billion for, for, for MPs. So, w I mean, if government was serious about it, the request would have been certainly represented, processed, and, and, and would, would know about, uh, how, for instance, how much is, is has been allocated to this particular item. And then how, ma how many TVs and radios would we have so that Whoever wants to follow through the, the, the accountability, uh, particularly maybe the, the auditors mm -hmm. and, and also the, 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 the accountability committees of parliament and the general public, then they would have uh, facts and say, we gave you this money to buy the following. But this whole thing is shrouded into lots of, actually I can call it jazz. It's, it's just talk, 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 and, <laughs> and, and we don't see where it's coming from, where it's going to end up. Uh, some people said, oh, some people have a factory of TVs, so <laughs> probably they want to sell well, their TVs. It's, it's not like some Bule is still <laughs> in business, but, uh, but uh, <laughs> let's, uh, let's bring you into the conversation, uh, Nicholas. Uh, uh, the, the people are talking about silver linings of uh, COVID-19, and uh, uh, someone like you, a communication specialist, uh, definitely this is a, the, the biggest silver lining among silver linings. I think people are calling you up, maybe MPs like... Uh, uh, Mr. Karuhanga here, just uh, keep on calling you up and uh, asking you about social media and how to put their campaigns out there. Some of them uh, don't even know how to load data. Uh, uh, just uh, walk me through how big of an opportunity that you are seeing for uh, folk like yourself. Uh, thank you, Arnold, and everyone watching NTV. All I can say is the opportunity is very big. It is an unprecedented opportunity that has been brought by an unprecedented occurrence, which is mm -hmm. COVID-19. Because traditionally, campaigns have always been going and speak to your people directly. When I here, he knows if he's in his constituency, he visits homes, he makes rallies. Now, because of COVID-19, those rallies might not be there. So the easiest tool of reaching your people is using digital means, which is SMS, which is radio, which is TV, which is social media, which are websites. So to communication people, the focus now is not on traditional media mainly. It is digital media. Because digital media is cheaper, and 
easy to access to so many people. It is also very democratic. So what I can say is the opportunities are very many for people in this sector. Unfortunately, the people in the sector are not prepared for those opportunities. Why am I saying that? Two things are happening. The uh, politicians who are looking for the competent people to do the work. The competent people are very few. Because if you say it is a digital campaign, because me what I know is the elections are the real elections, the uh, campaigning is digital. So the, current the campaigning is scientific, while the elections are the real elections, because at the end of the day, people again go are going to line up. Mm. Unlike America, where people do P.O. box vo voting, SMS voting, or email voting, in our scenario, when the voting time comes, it will be real voting, people will line up. But all the communication prior to that are going to be digital. So the scientific element is in the campaigning. So the politicians want to do the scientific campaigns, some of them, but they are looking for the right people to do the campaigns. Unfortunately, most of the people we have on the market only know one element of the campaigning, the execution element. Yet a good campaign is done by strategy and execution. If you allow me, I'm going to give you two examples of what I mean by an execution of a digital campaign and the planning of it. There is a company called Blue State. Blue State is very famous. It is the company that made Barack Obama the president of America. He trained the 2018 election against McCain and the 2020 election against Romney. Now, Blue State used digital to That's make... Uh, 2008. Yeah, 2008 okay. and even 12. 2008 is McCain, 12 mm. is uh, Romney. But it was the same company, Blue State. What they did was very simple. They got Obama, who is a good orator, is very likable. They focused on four things. Obama is a young man. He was, I think, 47 at that time. 46, actually. Obama is a young man. Obama is a handsome man. <laughs> yes, it matters in elections. <laughs> Obama is a black African who is an American. So they say he's young, he's handsome, he's black, he's likable, and he's outgoing. It's like you're mentioning all the things uh, Arnold here has going on. Exactly, forward, exactly. But, uh, yeah, just like Arnold. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. what happened was they saw Obama as a young, black, handsome man outgoing who, who, had, who had a message of hope for the entire America. At the, end of the day, mm. at the end of the day, majority of uh, most of the man Obama used came from online donations. Mm -hmm. Differently, there is another company called Cambridge Analytica. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I think Just I'm going to pause you there, in, uh, Nicholas, in because uh, Cambridge Analytica is riddled with scandal. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm coming there. Yes. I'm okay. coming now. Cambridge, now one, I used bl uh, Blue State to show you how to run a good digital campaign. Right. Now I want to show you how to run a bad digital campaign, but also win. Because uh, Cambridge Analytica was in charge of Uhuru elections in 2013 and in 2017. They based on propaganda. They were paid about 10 billion Ugandan shillings. That is like 300 million Kenyan shillings. But they, uh, uh, they, they uh, deliver uh, the results. So Nicholas, Uhuru is in government. Uh, is Nicholas, the president. Uh, Nicholas, let's uh, pause it there because yes. uh, th I want to get into that mm -hmm. uh, later on. There's another uh, particular campaign in uh, South Africa where when Jacob Zuma was being uh, rattled by mm. the journalists, uh, all these scandals are coming up. There's a smear campaign that was started by yet another company mm. uh, to shift away the focus from all his scandals and take it towards uh, land issues, yes. how the black people don't have land, yet they are the majority. Mm. So th th we'll, we're going to touch that later on. Um, Honorable Karuhanga, uh, the, the, the young gentleman here has just highlighted all these things. God knows, uh, maybe you tick all <laughs> some of the uh, Obama boxes. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, but do you, you get the sense that uh, you are about to, to maybe delve into some of the issues that is, uh, he's mentioning? Are these things that you are looking at critically in your campaign uh, leading up to 2021? Or you're just going for TVs <laughs> and run some ads on NTV, which we'll be actually looking forward to if you do. <laughs> Interesting. Um, anybody who is lucky to live in the 21st century, should embrace technology. It's probably one of the best things that uh, could have happened to us um, in, this, in this period that we are lucky to be on Earth. Um, however, technology, like any other one thing, if principles are taken out, if goodness is, is abused in anything by a, any set of grouping of people, then you miss what that technology, what th that goodness in technology. Mm -hmm. So we are saying, yes, uh, we want to embrace technology. But your scientific campaigning, if you say, because people now are trying to distinguish scientific uh, campaigns and scientific elections, they're saying, oh, no, the elections actually are, are the normal elections, but then we're talking about the campaigns. Now, if you tell me that um, 
Please, you go dig it in your campaigns. Then, make it even. Make it equally accessible. Uh, uh, d don't, don't have the advantage. And, and it's understood. It's COVID times. I see the president. He, he, he speaks for about two hours and probably mentioned one point. And <laughs> uh, that's, um, yeah. And, and that happens. But, but what happens when, when people who have divergent views, when Dr. Besiji or, 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 or Honorable Chagulani uh, or, or, or maybe General Montu or, or anybody, if they walk into any television uh, station or radio station, do they get that access without a disturbance? Well, well Honorable uh, Karuhanga, that, that's, that's a bit unfair because uh, at times when the president is speaking, is speaking uh, maybe to address COVID-19 issues and these are updates, you could look at it the same way as uh, maybe Governor Cuomo, uh, New York uh, Governor, uh, when he's addressing some of these issues, he's now speaking in another docket, uh, State of the Nation address. The, the old man can say, let's say, things for five hours, but that is now in a docket. That is not campaigning. Well, as... Well, as one may want to look at it that way, I hope, um, I had thought that if you have one or two points to make, probably you need less than five minutes, but it's okay. Well, you can use two hours, that's fine. Um, but again, th the question is, my, my, my concern is on the equitable access to the media. Mm. We've seen cases in court where a presidential candidate sues a TV station for having paid his money and still he does not get the airtime. What does this mean? That th the technology, go the goodness in technology can actually be abused if we do not apply the good principles. You see, ultimately, human beings, we do very well when we stick to, to principles. So if you say we, we need democracy, mm. and we, we actually do need it, so be sincere. Be sincere and say, we have, we have the following stations, and actually, I thought that would be the role of, of, of UCC. Say, so look, uh, as by law, we are required to ensure that as regulators, to ensure that everyone is treated fairly, the stations run, uh, run fairly. So we do not expect you to do things that, that uh, could be easily construed as discriminative. So th that's where I find a regime exceedingly uh, 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 untransparent, and, and, and therefore would think that that goodness in technology mm. should be utilized in a transparent, in a democratic manner. Uh, I, I like where you're going with this, and I want to bring you in, Nicholas. Uh, the, the fact that we've seen, let's say, you allude to, Honorable, you allude to the fact that uh, maybe uh, we've seen some cases, not even maybe, we have seen some cases in the past, in the past where uh, someone maybe pays for space on a television station or a radio station and his ads do not run. This time around, with the YouTubes and the Facebooks and the Twitters of this world where someone can pay for their promoted ads, that would not be the case. Would one argue, Nicholas, that this is the biggest window among windows for, at least on the digital space, not the TVs, on the digital space, to have something as simple as a little-known Arnold going against MP Karuhanga, who is an incumbent. Both of us pay for our ads on Facebook, and both of our ads run concurrently with no fear or favor. Isn't that a big opportunity, Nicholas? Yes, thank you, Arnold, and you make my work even much easier by explaining it that way. Because uh, the good honor over here is talking about the traditional media, which has its own issues, it has its owners. Now, I'm talking about the new media. Honorable Carl Hwang can only have one Facebook account, I can only have one. We can only all have a YouTube account, or we can all be on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So there is democracy on social media. There is democracy in online media. Until you get 50 influencers from Nigeria. No, of course, of course, of course, that also can happen. But at the end of the day, if my message is appearing, if my message is good, and I use my social media account. For example, just over the weekend, Honorable Chagulanyi had an online concert. Now, no one can stop his concert on Facebook. He had like seven, seven, 17,000 people watching it live. Like a month ago, he had another one. He had 28,000 people watching it live. No one can stop his YouTube show. Uh, there's a, a fellow called, uh, a, a very popular person called Mr. Tamale Mirundi. He was stopped to be on TV. He's now on social media. People watch him. In a day, he has 100,000 views. Now, social media is very democratic. So, when I have a hunger here, if he doesn't have enough space on TV, if he doesn't have enough space on radio, he has uh, unlimited space on social media. And here are the, fi the figures. You know, science, you know, science is very good. Science never lies. 
Uganda has a population of about 43 million people. Mm -hmm. According to uh, electoral commission, there are about 18 million voters. Mm -hmm. According to a recent report from UCC, there are about 26 million uh, um, mobile phone users and about 19 million internet users according to a 2019 Jumia report. But have now, you seen the smartphone users? That's 6.6 no, .6 million. We are going slowly, uh, Arnold. Yes, 6.6 .6 smartphone users. But now I'm talking about SMS. <laughs> now, if <laughs> MTN, Airtel, Africell have 26 million people, uh, one SMS can reach them. Because uh, most people are just focusing on smartphone. Now, a digital campaign, and that's where we are getting the problem from, a digital campaign doesn't only mean YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. A digital campaign means SMS. It also means lob calls. You remember that famous call of one week to elections? You pick your call and a voice comes, this is the old man with a hat. That is a lob call. <laughs> now you can target 15 million people using that lob call. Differently, when I look out here from his constituency, I know he has a database of his voters and his members. Now we can do personalized messages to each one of them, where even when the message is reaching, the, his, the name of the person receiving it is indicated. Hey, Arnold, it is me, Honorable Karl Hanga. I remind you that tomorrow it's time for voting. Please keep time. Hey, uh, Nicholas, uh, it is Now that takes us away from the issue of TV, radio, newspapers, and the politics with them. Uh, Nicholas, uh, if we keep this up, people will start calling here, asking for your phone number, members of parliament, uh, 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 for, for re-election uh, uh, tips and all that. Um, the Honorable Karuhanga, you've uh, listened to uh, the, the gentleman here. He, he, he <coughs> has a, 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 I want to go as far as calling it rather an orthodox mm -hmm. uh, way uh, or means mm -hmm. to uh, what we've come to know as Kakuyege kind of campaigns, you know. And uh, across the road uh, in Parliament, when you meet your peers, uh, are they grasping <coughs> this or are they looking forward to getting people's mobile money num uh, numbers and they send them 2,000 each? you know, to <laughs> on the eve of elections and tell them, hey, man, uh, just put in the, uh, the ballot. You know, um, like I said, we all have to embrace technology as, as, as a generation or even generations. However, we have also to be realistic. Um, we're talking about uh, uh, 6 million uh, smartphone, smartphone users. 6.6, .6, yes. Now, and I also want to make sure that they're actually 6.6 .6 because there could also have been 6.6 .6 of the attempted smartphone users. I hope that's the daily usage of, of smartphones. I represent a municipality. So ordinarily, my constituency should be pretty urban. Um, but I'm very, very alive to the fact that very few, and probably less than 10% of my constituents, actually access a smartphone daily. Mm. That's one. So already um, that, that, that has its so many dimensions. Uh, and so I, I know if I want to reach them, so um, the, 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 the approach of, 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 of using the smartphones, certainly I know what percentage of the people I will be reaching. But Honorable, now how, how are you yeah, running your campaign? How are you <coughs> running your campaign? First of all, the campaign. Are you, oh, are you running? Should no, I start? <laughs> yeah, the campaigns haven't started yet. I, I believe we are supposed to be nominated as part of the Electoral Commission roadmap in October. But. Um, We've been carrying out activities in our constituencies as incumbent uh, uh, members of parliament. And so, largely, some of them have been able to go on, but largely, again, some have also, um, uh, we can't carry them on because, again, you can't gather people, you can't, uh, you, you can't meet people in, in large groupings. So it's a bit tough. Uh, now it's the smaller conversations. Um, the, 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 the messages that you are talking about, uh, the audio messages that you can send, and again, we, we need to embrace technology. I, I, I personally, I really, uh, because I don't think if we want to progress as a people, that we can miss out on technology. However, so if one has got to send that message to, uh, uh, to, to, to one's constituents, uh, while uh, one, I think it's going to cost uh, a bit of money. Um, secondly, um, you have got to make sure that um, that people actually uh, embrace it. So the the, the transition into from the, the, the original what the we would call the orthodox way of campaigning to the now the, 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 the more unconventional way. Um, that transition is almost happening uh, uh, almost sporadically. So it's the, the, the speed <coughs> at which we have to quickly move into this way 
is, 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 so, is so fast that suddenly we're going to leave out so many people. Now, what is the problem in all of this, in my own opinion? The problem is the mistrust in those who are governing this country, especially the election process. When you have a, a situation where a leader is writing to the electoral commission and saying, look, as the president said, I want this company to be the one to print ballot papers. Now, when you say that the election is scientific, the campaign should be scientific, at the back of everyone already, it creates an impression of mistrust, of, of, of lack of, of saying, oh, but can we really trust these guys that what they're proposing is honest? So, uh, and you don't see it by, it is even made worse by even what you just read. Now, what we've been saying for their televisions, radios coming, and then all of a sudden, nothing. There's no money. So, th the whole thing again goes back to the principal, principled leadership. That as leaders, we must be open and say, look, this is what we intend, this is what we mean. But this is also what we seemingly mean. Yeah, it was <laughs> <laughs> those those are almost two <laughs> completely different things. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, honorable, I, I definitely uh, sympathize with that. And uh, there's an old saying that it, it comes from uh, an economics arm uh, that uh, goes around expectations management. You know, they say uh, monetary policy is 98 percent expectations management. Uh, clearly, even politics is close to 99.9 percent .9 expectations management. They just uh, play around with their expectations. But uh, I want to take us back uh, just a bit. Uh, yeah, there's a very interesting <coughs> issue that uh, Honorable Bay has said about the penetration of uh, smartphones uh, I want, you, I want you to touch that. I want you to touch yeah. that uh, in concert with uh, this particular thing that you actually touched on, mm. which was uh, with uh, Cambridge Analytica at the mm. beginning. Um, social media can be used f uh, very, very terribly. Mm. Uh, the Trump campaign, the reason why you mentioned Cambridge Analytica, away mm. from the Uhuru campaign, yes. uh, Cambridge Analytica made a big, big, big mess when it yeah. came to uh, uh, Hillary Clinton taking on President Trump. Mm. Now, they were sending targeted uh, uh, ads to uh, people in the southern part of uh, the, the United States, and you know, they would push them uh, towards uh, things like Hillary's emails mm. and all these targeted, very, very specifically targeted, and they would look at your browsing history and they get all this big data, then they target ads towards you. Another one is Bell Pottinger in, the U in, uh, the in South Africa, where mm. uh, President Jacob Zuma, I remember when they tried to oust him so many times, uh, and when the focus was on him and the Gupta family, which flew in all the way from India or, and landed on a military base, uh, they started to, Bell Pottinger, PR firm, started to run a counter campaign to shift the public's attention away from Jacob Zuma and all his troubles mm -hmm. towards something else like land and all that. Now this is again social media and the PR and communications mm -hmm. being used for the bad. Uh, uh, I want the two of you to touch this and maybe just uh, critique each other. Mm -hmm. um, I'll start with you Nicholas. Do we have the capacity to actually look out for things like this? Targeted ads, fake news, alternative facts, because like he said, the, like the Honorable said, this is sporadic. It's happening now, mm. in the now, in less than six months. Mm. Do we have the capacity to actually look out for things like this when a country like the U.S. is grappling? Unfortunately, just like America, we also don't have the capacity to look out for fake news because the issue of fake news is not unique to Uganda. America is suffering from fake news. Trump is always calling journalists fake reporters, a lot of fake news, even the people, uh, the Democrats also said it is some fake news. So the issue of fake news is not an issue for Uganda to handle. It is an issue for the world to handle. So we should but just live with it. Specifically for Uganda. And in regards to using technology, like you have said, you have clearly said it. Like I told you, Cambridge Analytica has a theory and its philosophy before it closed was they use propaganda to win elections. And they did a good job in Kenya. They did a good job in Nigeria and so many other countries. How is, that a, good job? I mean, How is that a good job? The job was to win an election. <laughs> They were hired at by any cost. Here, here, at here, any cost. No, here is the thing. Here <laughs> is the thing. <laughs> not, just, just a moment, Honorable. Yeah. You are a politician and you know politicians. When you contest, you are contesting to win. Now, if it means sharing some fake news here and there <laughs> as part of. No, I mean, this is happening. Uh, Nicholas, this is happening. No, you Nicholas, see. No, no, no Arnold, Arnold and Honorable, me, I'm being realistic. In the, now, in the words of Julius I don't Malema, believe, personally, we should not use no, no. Uh, political expedience. We should have some uh, virtues that Arnold, stay with us in Arnold, our DNA. My theory of a digital campaign is Blue State, the one that brought you uh, Obama. And I told you they created a good guy. But what it sounds but like to again, me is I, you're winning at you, no, any no, no, cost. No. I've told you there is another way of doing a digital <laughs> campaign. 
there is a good campaign that Honorable Kaluha might like. Of the guy is good, he has worked, he will represent us, he knows our needs. Now, Blue State did that for Obama for two terms and he won overwhelmingly. But again, like I've told you, there is that way which I believe in personally. But that doesn't stop me from talking about the other way <laughs> that other people do, which is Cambridge Analytics, which has since closed. Because remember the issue of them, the 80 million Facebook accounts, the content they got illegal and then they had to disappear. But now they have come back, they have a new company, I think called Emidata, the same company, the mother company that used to own uh, Cambridge yeah. Analytics now has a new company and they are going to do again the campaigns in Africa because they know in Africa it is easy to play those games. So my point is very simple. D there are two options. Now, when Abokal Hunger as a person, if he wants a good digital campaign, he's going to choose, do I want a good campaign like Blue State, or do I want a propaganda campaign like one that is done by Cambridge Analytics? Unfortunately, I can't do a propaganda campaign. But there are people that can do a propaganda campaign. Now, I am for a Blue State campaign. But importantly, when Abokal Hunger talked about an issue of smartphones, now, I'm sorry, Honorable Kalugaga, but I, I have a problem with most of you politicians. And the problem is one, all of you are used to the traditional campaigns where some people sing themselves to victory. What do I mean? You go to a, a campaign with 20 musicians mm -hmm. to bring people together. Mm -hmm. So they, their performances, comedy, it is, and when you have 50,000 people, then you address. Now there you are gathering people because of music. Now you are used to the traditional way of doing things. Now you are faced with a scenario that none of us saw coming. You can't gather because COVID is real. COVID is killing people. So all of you have to use your social media accounts. Now you are worried that now I'm on social media, I'm alone. How sure am I that the 30,000 I would have got in the municipality would come attend? Now the easy thing to do is, Honorable Kaluhanga, I know for sure you have networks in your constituents, you have their SMA, what their mobile numbers, you have their WhatsApp groups, among others. As things are right now, the campaigns are going to be digital. Mm. Now, the earlier Honorable Kaluhanga and the like align to a digital campaign, Honorable Kaluhanga, just like me, is a young man. He can easily, he's liked, he has done good work, people know him. Now, he shouldn't have any worry about a digital campaign because while 10% of his people in the constituents have smartphones, about 80% have feature phones. Now an SMS will reach them. They won't see your, your, your video, but an SMS will reach them. A rob call uh, will reach uh, them. Uh, uh, so why don't you also talk about reaching them through a rob call and an SMS? Why do you focus on only the smartphone, which is only 10%, yet you know 90% of your people use feature phones? Uh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, let's uh, uh, open the floor to uh, Honorable Karuhanga. Um, the, the gentleman has mentioned uh, people who sing themselves to, uh, to victory. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a gentleman who uh, has been singing, and people love him. You know, uh, they took him to the north, he won there. They called him now the king maker they took him to the to, to the west he won there he won his own municipality you know clearly the singing works uh, honorable uh, Karo Hunger. first of all uh, 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 in all honesty you need to respect singing mm. <laughs> not because there are so many young people out there that do amazing works in music mm. but also uh, even mobilization mm. across the world mm. music plays a fundamental role. I used to be uh, a scouter uh, uh, as a young man, and, and I know how we would mobilize each other. Like scouting talent, uh, yes. the singers. Yeah, and, uh. and we would, so, so, um, <coughs> so please, uh, music, <laughs> respect it. Um, and, and, and yes, you're right, uh, uh, my, my, my friend, uh, Honorable Chagrani, he, he sings greatly well, and um, people love the music, and he communicates. So, it's, uh, and actually, you just last said that he uses social media uh, to go organize two concerts. So, uh, music, music, music is okay. So, um, and, and so we should also invest in its ourselves. absence. However. But see, oh no, now, no, now, no, now, no, let me, let me, let me, let me go. Twenty seconds, if you allow. I didn't mention anyone when I said singing yourself to victory. I uh, gave you an explanation of oh, you coming with twenty musicians. Now we all know. In 2016, NRM had a, a Tubonga now a crew that had like 20 musicians. Mm. Do, uh, Dr. Kiza BCJ had to talk, to talk at Kwa Barabara and his team. So all the people had the musicians. Right, My right. point was very simple. You use musicians to mobilize. Now because they are digital campaigns, there is no way you are going to have musicians m singing all over. They don't know where you can have them is singing on your Facebook page. Right, right. That is and, my and that's where that, that, that's I where respect the music, yeah, musicians. Yeah. And, and I'm that's in where the, the music honorable. business. I love music. So I have no issue with the music. Yeah, right. And that's where the honorable is going. That's yeah. where the honorable so, is going. So, so thank you. Now, the, the, the whole, you see, one thing we must agree on is that we, we need to embrace technology uh, because it has every good thing it can deliver for people. The, the, the critical thing here is we have an election right uh, just a few weeks, so it's no longer even months now, 
a few weeks from now. Because I think, uh, for instance, the primaries, uh, the preparation begins, uh, apparently, I'm told, they are even activities supposed to begin today. So what does this mean? That if you have not given room people to prepare for, uh, for a given process, uh, and then again, I had thought that the Electoral Commission would find this very important, engage the stakeholders and say, look, it appears because of COVID-19, we're going to have a different way of running this election. The campaigns may be different. So what do you think as stakeholders? I'm sure every leader, any serious leader, would not want to see his or, or her people suffering from COVID-19, simply because one is campaigning. Mm, yeah. But engage and, and, and have a platform and have avenues, make it an inclusive process. That's one. Two, campaigns have happened elsewhere in these times. You've seen, you mentioned Malawi. So we, we it's, it, it's not uh, a, a, a novel idea in these COVID times that people can run an election, and an election that people have trust in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I like the, 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 the analysis of, of, of the digital examples. Um, the, the, the abuse in, in the digital world, yes, certainly we, 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 we will be there. Yes, we can also embrace it, but yes, we need to make sure that this is one is, is accessible to all the, the people in, in our constituents, or at least the super majority of them. Mm. So if you are saying um, a member should basically rely on uh, uh, sending a, a voice message, so we need to also look at the analysis and say, okay, how much is this likely to cost? Uh, how, how possible is this? Uh, how, how effective is it? So that it's, it's a process that we can engage on, but also we can say, what did Malawi do? We've not had many cases in Malawi uh, after the elections of, of COVID-19. Uh, Honorable, I, I, I like how you're looking at it. And, yes. and this is why it, it helps to have the two of you on at the same time. Because uh, he brings uh, a very, again, I might call it unorthodox because of the times that we are in. And we haven't done it before. Uh, that's what he brings to the table, right? And we have to embrace it. Uh, and what you're uh, alluding to is something that is broad-based, something that has to fit everyone's shoes, you know, and, and th that's th the contrasting views is arguably what would make for an amazing campaign if the two of you were to work together. But uh, uh, very, very briefly, we actually have to wrap this up. Uh, uh, Nicholas, um, th that wasn't actually a, a campaign for you to give him something. Uh, uh, Nicholas, uh, wrap it up in uh, very, very a few minutes. Uh, over to you after uh, Honorable Karuhanga. Uh, so that we actually uh, yes. I bid you farewell. Yes, no problem. Thank you, Honourable. Now, as I conclude, let me just give Honourable Karuhanga a few figures about the SMS. Now, an SMS, if you're buying, buying them in bulk, is like eight shillings. Eight, eight shillings. So with 80,000, you are 80,000 Ugandan shillings. You are sending SMS to more than 10,000 people. It is cheaper than organizing a campaign that is like a concert, paying mobilizers, paying agents, among others, to bring up people. So an SMS is cheaper. If it is an issue of cost, Social media, digital campaigns are cheaper than traditional but, but campaigns. Nicholas, Nicholas what, what the Honorable is saying, sorry mm. I'm interrupting you. No what problem. the Honorable is saying is, uh, and, and an SMS is a few lines, mm. what someone like him has become synonymous with mm. is putting out a message, is, is, is speaking to people, telling them I was part of this bill, I moved this, I helped, uh, I, I, I let the world know that people are walking away with 20 million at a time where we need health workers to buy PPE. D do you see the difference here? And that's what yes. I think he's trying to appeal and to here. Arnold, what I'm saying is these are unprecedented times. No one saw them coming. Now, if you are go going to do digital campaigns, they're going to be digital. Now, you can share a message and make a message understood by people. There's what they call phasing out a message. You p bring it in stages. If your message is a thousand words, mm. it can be broken down from stage one, stage two, stage three, and when it gets finished. Mm. Now, the problem, like I told you, the challenge we have, most of the people that are doing digital do execution. They don't do the strategy. So if you have a good strategy, if one of message is a thousand words, it will be broken down in short videos, short audios, short SMS that will make the message reach, reach home and people will turn up to vote for him. So all, what I'm, all, all, all I am saying is simple. We are in unprecedented times. Even Honorable Kalohanga knows that. 
The electoral commission, I said, we are going to have digital elections. Now, me, I'm not a politician. Campaigns. Campaigns. Yeah, exactly. Digital campaigns, then uh, physical elections. Me, I'm not a politician. Now, politicians are going to have different views depending on their point of view of things. Yes. NRM politicians might like this. Opposition might not like it. Now, me, I don't want to be brought into a discussion of the politics of the campaigns. Now, me, as a communication consultant, I'm telling you, if indeed we are going to do digital campaigns, we can actually do successful digital campaigns the same way Blue State did it for Barack Obama. That's what I'm saying. Right. The honorables like Karuhanga should embrace. He's a young honorable. He's a very good MP. He's, he's, he's not late <laughs> to embrace technology <laughs> and use it to change his people and change Uganda the same way technology has changed the entire world. Uh, honorable Karuhanga, uh, you have the last word. Yeah, thank you. Um, you see, transparent free and fair elections constitute the cardinal part of democracy. Now, if we are going to have a scientific campaign, one, we must make sure legally this is taken care of. Because again, you don't want to waste billions of shillings organizing a process that will be successfully legally challenged. <laughs> Two, we have had um, <laughs> elections elsewhere and, and, and people ha have not had, I mean, um, Malawi makes a very good case. Burundi, Burundi. Yeah, Burundi had elections the other day. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the case the, the we, we see here is that people have had these elections, have lived in them, have, have not complained of, of this whole utilization of the pandemic uh, to, to basically cut out or leave out a, a, a section of, of, of certain uh, citizens and then promote um, uh, another section. Now, I, like I said, I mean, anybody must embrace, must love technology. It's, it's a great thing. But this technology must be used, must be used fairly, must be, actually, we, we must do everything possible not to be seen to paint technology in the eyes of Ugandans as something that that you, you, do you know how Swahili is such a wonderful language? But do you know how the past regimes mm, mm, used mm. Swahili as to scare away the people? That's why Ugandans had to speak Swahili. Because Swahili is good. But it was used in a way that really vulgarized its essence, its, its usefulness. Now, I, I, I am beginning to see, to, and that would be a very bad thing, because it will have greater, greater implications in the long run. So I hope that. Um, the government, um, and, and here particularly the executive, appreciates the, the, the essence, the importance of having a free and fair, but most importantly, transparent election. Gentlemen, many thanks for uh, making time to speak to us. Uh, to my left, uh, Nicholas Kalunji, who's a digital communications specialist, and uh, to my extreme left, uh, Honorable Gerald Karuhanga. MP in Tungamo Municipality, who still will not tell us if he's uh, running again. Uh, it's oh just well, I uh, guess uh, I think I'll be <laughs> running most likely, so most we'll, likely. We'll, get, we'll get that. <laughs> most likely. <laughs> <Yes>. uh, <laughs> 27 minutes to uh, 9 a.m. I'm Arnold Segawa. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more after this.